despite his rugged good looks, cool guy, reputation and Hollywood success later in life, Steve McQueen's youth and early years were punctuated with struggle. Terence Stephen McQueen was born in 1930 at the dawn of the Great Depression. He was abandoned by his alcoholic mother to be raised until aged eight by his grandparents and an uncle on a farm in rural Missouri. His uncle was one of the few adults in his childhood of whom he had fond memories. He would go on to live again with his mother and two successive stepfathers, both of whom were physically abusive. Today, we look at the fast-paced life of a film icon, Steve McQueen. In his teenage years, McQueen bounced back and forth between living on the streets, his mother's home, and his uncle's farm. His life was one of beatings, rebelliousness, and petty crime, and he was eventually sent to a boys' home, the California Junior Boys Republic, where he stayed until the age of 16. The institution left a profound mark on McQueen, and he would go on to support the institution for the rest of his life. McQueen eventually landed in the Marine Corps, a four-year experience which was not surprisingly riddled with resistance to authority. After numerous scrapes, demotions, and even a month-long stay in the brig, McQueen committed to the discipline of the Marines and was eventually honorably discharged with positive memories of his time with the service. By 1952, McQueen decided to use his GI Bill funds to study acting. He supplemented his earnings by racing motorcycles, and even in his early days of driving, he was often successful. In 1955, he moved to Hollywood, where he landed bit parts in film and TV. Throughout the 1950s, McQueen worked steadily in television, culminating in the successful series Wanted, Dead or Alive, in which he played a bounty hunter. McQueen's first big break into film came in the early 1960s when he was talent spotted by none other than old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, and given a small part in the film Never So Few. His full-time career started somewhat modestly, then with The Blob, then in 1960 came The Magnificent Seven. A movie in which McQueen nearly stole the rug from understar Yul Brunner in the acclaimed movie. He next portrayed a brash but wily escape artist in The Great Escape, 1963, giving acclaimed performances in The Cincinnati Kid, 1965, The Sand Pebbles, 1966, the latter of which earned him his only Academy Award nomination. Following a small break from the screen, McQueen entered into his most memorable phase with The Thomas Crown Affair, 1968, and Bullet, also filmed in 1968, which featured what many consider to be the greatest car chase ever seen on film. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. After the underperforming race movie Le Mans in 1971, he had one of the biggest hits of the year with The Getaway in 1972 where he starred alongside Harley McGraw and he delivered a solid return as an escaped prisoner in Papillon 1973. He was in the 1960s and into the 1970s as big a star as there was and the most highly paid one in 1974, standing on equal box office footing with such contemporaries as Paul Newman. He even turned down starring roles in such blockbusters as Close Encounters of the Third Kind, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Apocalypse Now, choosing instead to play a cowboy and Tom Horn and a contemporary bounty hunter in The Hunter. In his personal life, McQueen's rebellious competitive nature proved to be a lifelong companion. He was famously antagonistic with directors and co-stars, and he considered Paul Newman as his professional rival. McQueen also passed on Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid because he and Newman couldn't agree on who would receive top billing. He also missed roles in Breakfast at Tiffany's, Ocean's Eleven and 
Dirty Harry, among others. Some due to scheduling conflicts, to be fair, and others due to McQueen's personal whims. Steve McQueen was married three times. His second wife was actress Arlie McGraw, whom friends claimed was his true love. And he had two children with his first wife, though he was connected with numerous other women and actresses in Hollywood over the course of his career. He was a prolific drug user, smoker and drinker, and his love for racing never waned. And he enthusiastically embraced every opportunity to drive and do his own stunts in his film. He would eventually own a collection of 130 motorcycles. Steve McQueen forever changed the definition of the Hollywood leading man with roles as quiet but tough protagonists who sought their own methods outside the bounds of authority. Dubbed the King of Cool, McQueen ushered in a new breed of anti-heroes who commanded the begrudging respect along with the large salaries of studio producers and directors while attracting millions of moviegoer fans around the world. And McQueen was Hollywood's king of cool for a reason. His legacy lives on today in a new generation as his image is ubiquitous in culture, especially hipster culture, and he also still appears in modern films like the recent remake of The Magnificent Seven. In The Great Escape, McQueen played Virgil Hiltz in a role that propelled him to superstardom. Then there's his role as the detective Frank Bullitt. He literally flies his car through the streets of San Francisco in what is regarded by many as the greatest car chase in cinematic history. Steve McQueen was not cool because he drove the bullet car. The bullet car was cool because Steve McQueen drove it. During the mid-70s, Steve was definitely the number one movie star in the world and he is still used as a point of reference for masculinity and coolness to this day. He was and is the definition of an American icon. McQueen was a private guy. In the late 1970s, he was once approached in person by Tribune film critic Gene Siskel who had initially been rebuffed in his attempts to interview the actor. Siskel asked... Do you think there's a chance we could do an interview in the future? Should I call your press agent? McQueen replied, maybe. Look, I'm sorry, but I just don't do interviews. I haven't given one in seven years. Yes, I have a press agent, but his job is to turn down interviews. There is no doubt that this reluctance to talk about himself helped to burnish his star. Mystery fascinates, but does not explain. In a rare 1966 interview, McQueen himself declared his goals and they weren't solely based on getting extra screen time. I've leveled off in some respects, plan my business and my career ahead now and try to schedule my work so I'll have time off, said McQueen. I just want the brass ring and the pine trees and my kids and the green grass. I want to get rich and fat and watch my children grow. McQueen is celebrated as one of the most important actors in Hollywood history. He lived a brief, fast-paced life. There is just so much legacy there, he said, but I think the lasting legacy is this individual who represents freedom, who represents pull yourself up by the bootstraps, a street kid that made it big. And that's sort of the American dream, isn't it? Bullet was one of McQueen's best-known films in terms of critical acclaim and commercial success. The film spoke to his love of cars and driving. The plot begins with McQueen's maverick police sergeant character Frank Bullet being assigned to protect a mob defector Johnny Ross from retribution before he can be called as a star witness in a hearing on organised crime. An assassination attempt is made and through a series of aliases, cover-ups and other twists and turns, the viewer is led to a dramatic conclusion. The film is noted for filming extensively on location and capturing realistic depictions of police procedural detail at the time. That being said, the most memorable scene in Bullet is the car chase in which Bullet, in a Ford Mustang, chases two hitmen in a Dodge Charger through the streets of San Francisco. The scene took nearly three weeks to film on location. Bullet is certainly one of Steve McQueen's most iconic works. Following the epic disaster movie The Towering Inferno in 1974, McQueen's career hit a downslope that was later revealed to be the result of his battle with lung cancer. 
Though his life and career were cut short at age 50, McQueen remained one of the most iconic and beloved film stars of the latter half of the 20th century. In 1980, at the young age of just 50, Steve McQueen died from pleural mesothelioma, a type of cancer associated with asbestos exposure. McQueen believed it originated from high exposure to asbestos while in the Marines. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think was Steve McQueen's most memorable film role? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon underneath this video to stay updated on all of our latest content. 